Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Student Loan Planner Podcast. I'm your host, Sam Terwilliger, and today we have Sam and Ben on the call. Hello. Hey, thanks, Sam. Hi, Sam. I am so excited about this episode. We're calling it Mohela Mo Problems, and we're going to be talking all things Mohela and everything that they've done wrong. You know, guys, I feel like, um, you know, we've probably heard this expression, like being a meteorologist, that's like the one job you can have and and be wrong and you'll always have a job. And I'm like, you know what, we have to add like working for Mohela to that list because I feel like they can do whatever they want. And so far, I haven't seen any big repercussions. Let's talk about some stuff that you guys are seeing, though, with with clients, what they've been dealing with and how we've been kind of um, working through some of those issues. So, so Sam, I'll, how about you kick things off and tell us some things you've been seeing that our clients have been dealing with? We're actually speaking now just like short of a week of the announcement of the IDR recertification pause extension. And I think a lot of our frustration with Mohela over the last three months, and I know, know Ben on this call has some personal uh, frustration with them too, um, has stemmed from just like lack of communication um, and just understanding the process. And that's, I think that is what happens when you do hire people rapidly and not necessarily get them up to speed and train them. Um, it's going to just lead to just potential mass errors and oversights, especially when you're communicating with borrowers on a reoccurring basis. Right. Um, and so I think we're going to dive in, but I believe we've seen everything from like the delays to lack of communication that has led to frustration. And also just, uh, we, we have some scary stories of potential forgiveness that has been what we call we're seeing on the internet unforgiven. Right. Uh, so diving into that. Um, but I'll start off with some, uh, specifically relating to the PSLF, right? Public service loan forgiveness. Um, once you reach your 120, you know, 10 year mark of qualifying credits, right? With the having the right type of repayment and also having the qualifying employment, uh, you submit your final employer verification form. Uh, and two to three months later, in normal times, right? You get that notification, like your loans have been forgiven, right? And it's where you move on from there. You pass this part of your life. Um, but we're having some hearing some reports that, you know, whether it was close to six months or to a year later, Mohela came back and actually put them back into repayment. Um, and really, the, when we're going down this rabbit hole uh, to kind of research a little bit longer, we're kind of noticing a consistent pattern of Mohela up front kind of incorrectly qualifying payments that maybe were not qualified, meaning that maybe that borrower at that time wasn't in repayment, or maybe that borrower at the time wasn't was in repayment, but maybe not working for that employer. Um, and this could be for so many reasons why Mohila has made this mistake. So feel free to chime in. But my suspicions are like, you know, it could be anything from the Fed loan to Mohila transfer that occurred for borrowers on, over the last like, you know, year and a half to two years and just data incorrections, but also Mohila just, I think at the time period, just kind of like over aggressively um, just not doing any kind of quality assurance on their kind of qualification um, because a lot of these borrowers are unconfirmed that they really didn't have 120 and they just kind of rolled with what Mohela is maybe just saying like, yeah, they should know they're the government agency. They're, they're the servicer, right? Like they're working for the department of education here. They know best, but I think, you know, a common theme on our podcast at least, right. Is that Mohela is, um, I'm sorry, but that you should kind of have to be like your self-advocate, right? With these these servicers. And so sometimes when they you see something that might be in your favor, it doesn't hurt to kind of dig a little deeper to see if that was actually correct. Because especially when it comes to forgiveness, um, it could come back to bite you, right? Because um, the government might make mistakes, but they will eventually reconcile in a sense, right? Servicers will reconcile. <laughs> So um, Sam, I kind of want to take the TLDR of what you just said, because yeah. I know for people listening out there, their hearts probably just dropped at the thought of mm -hmm, like, yeah. I made it to 120 and like my, my forgiveness can be taken from me. What the TLDR is, they are not reversing forgiveness for folks who actually qualify for forgiveness. It is only if you did not actually have the 120 and it was, you know, quote unquote error in your favor, but you didn't actually earn it. Those are the cases where you may see an audit and have that reverse back to what is correct. And so like Sam was saying, you kind of have to just stay vigilant and advocate for yourself. I was I about to turn to you, Ben. sensitive to, to panic about all things PSLF because every single one of us and every single one of you uh, had always seen those articles and headlines, 99% uh, denial rate, this, that. And we know tons has changed and tons have been improved. And we've seen as a team hundreds of millions in in, in forgiveness and, and know it's hundreds of billions out there. But it's so easy to get scared. And what we just described is everyone's worst nightmare. 
but it's 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 honestly no surprise. I think it's really uh, scary and unfortunate for those few it, it happened to. But the analogy I always remind people of is student loan servicers are to mistakes as the ocean is to water. It's just kind of unavoidable within the territory. Um, unfortunately, a mistake that looks like it plays out in your favor, then ultimately not working out happened or happened. I, I don't think this has impacted any of the clients we've worked with as far as we know, but I, I do know from past consultations that someone told me a few clients, I have X credits from Mohila and going through their employment history and their own data file, I'm like, yeah, you should have X minus 15. So I have no idea where X existed. You haven't even had your loans for that long. So they must have made some error. And I've kind of pre-coached them to guard their heart that PSLF credits can't just magically appear out of nowhere. So unless if you you're have Mohila. PSLF credits, yeah, unless you have Mohila. <laughs> so if you have more PSLF credits than you've even had months in repayment or qualifying service, then something's wrong and just guard your heart. And this is why we always remind and encourage everybody to recertify annually for PSLF and at the change of any employer and make sure everything lines up from qualifying payments and ineligible payments uh, with your employment history there and your borrower portal and do some self auditing and advocating and avoid the nightmare. I was just, Sorry, I just want to clarify because like I was all doom and gloom, right? I don't want to scare anybody too. I want to be fair. Like we're, I'm talking about a few edge cases here that have just come together more recently. I want to say, and so for most of our, I don't, Ben, you guys, it's been, you can speak to this. Sometimes when I'm reviewing a file with a client, it's more that they're missing verification that needs to be there, not that there is magic verification in qualifying employment there. So let's clarify the word though that Ben just said, because he said recertify, and we're specifically talking about employment, your employment certification form. Um, the other issue that we are talking about is income recertification. This is the big, I'm going to use a, a Yiddish word, balagan. This was a mess. This is a cluster F that they messed up. Ben, you've had to um, deal with this with a lot of clients. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what the issue is with the recertification date and how you have had to deal with Mohela personally. Yeah, for those of you in the know and somehow able to keep up, whether through being here or studentaid.gov pages and announcements, the announcement that had been out there for months was that if you had an IDR anniversary date listed prior to March 1st, 2024, that it needed to be pushed back a full calendar year, meaning if you're in an income-driven repayment plan, the deadline by which you need to have recertified your payment so they can change your payment for the next 12 months ahead or keep you in the plan was supposed to be pushed back uh, from any anything in February 2024 or sooner was supposed to be 2025 or pushed back that full calendar year. And I, I, I've seen a lot of data files for student loans where the IDR anniversary date was reported as February, and it was that way in the prior year and the prior year and when the loans are with Fed loans. But then all of a sudden, the, 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 the letters start coming in that say you got to recertify right now and we'd know this was an error because we'd tell them hey look on this announcement page it tells you 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 may get communication showing a date earlier than march it will be pushed back but then if you talk to your lovely servicer at mohila and you're brave enough to sit on hold for one to 20 million hours and go through that lovely call music they will tell you, no, we are requiring you to recertify by March, or we're going to change your payment from whatever IDR plan it had been set at for the entire payment pause to uh, generally they warn you about your level or standard tenure payment, maybe thousands of dollars relative to thousands of dollars higher than what your IDR payment was. And Mohila was taking this really strong stance in the sand, I, I probably spanned 20 reps myself, and I'm sure beyond our clients, literally, I would assume hundreds and hundreds of hours were wasted with these frustrations and going from reps to management to other management. And the IDR anniversary date is the deadline by which you need to have everything already in and process for them so they can switch the payment. 
they were claiming that they never give you this information and that they show your NSLDS data file as just some arbitrary, not totally arbitrary, but about 35 days before or 90 days before your actual IDR anniversary date. And they had been deflecting all of these borrowers to tell them, no, your actual IDR anniversary date wasn't in February like we reported to you in your borrower portal and like we did on your NSLDS. What we got from Fed loans was different, and it's actually later. So you do have to recertify now, and your payment will go from maybe a couple hundred to a couple thousand. Strictly against the guidance of the Department of Education and their bosses at studentaid.gov to report you the real date and then do what you were supposed to. They were kind of just making things up, and tons of complaints were getting filed for this. CFPB, um, student aid ombudsman, and the ombudsman was just swamped and ultimately started getting back to people saying it's your servicer's job to handle this. And some people were left similarly with the CFPB. So we know there's been a lot of frustration, anger, confusion, and mass miscommunication on these IDR anniversary dates, but at least now everybody can get the breath of fresh air that it's being pushed back a handful of months and Hopefully it's not as chaotic for when they resume late fall and you need to maybe look at what your IDR anniversary date was when you were with Fed loans prior to, prior to getting transferred to Mohila. So if it is terribly messed up beyond what the Department of Education and Federal Student Aid tells your servicer to do, that you can advocate for yourself to get the right thing done so you don't end up paying more than you need to sooner than you need to. Man, I was angry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Ben's, Ben's got some personal. How, how many minutes on hold do you think you've had in the last like two months? <clears throat> oh, how many lifetimes have I had on hold? And it's <laughs> it's just it's really far too many. And I shouldn't even be complaining because I'm I'm really I I joined a few uh, clients on on calls with student loan servicers, really for science and exploration because it's really frustrating for us as your guys. Mm -hmm consultants we care about you and we want to give you good advice it, it it it's terrible to tell you the right thing and 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 how to go get it done and then you do go to get it done and it doesn't work and then we tell you how to resolve it and takes you hours of pain and confusion to try to resolve it so i was like let me take matters into my own hands i got this boxing gloves are going on and it, it was a freaking nightmare. It was like the worst experience ever across multiple times. And speaking the same language and knowing what I'm talking about, I thought it would be easy to get the job done on the phone. But while that made me feel stupid and frustrated, I felt not as stupid and frustrated when I realized how wide span these issues were and I know we were just talking about this, but the uh, student loan borrower protection center, I think. Well, I'll have to you know double check that acronym or name, but a few nonprofits and other uh, groups have collected massive numbers of complaints against Mohila and started to draft some Mohila papers. And there's really complaints all over the internet, but it was found out internally that they they may have been in just an opinion and from stuff reading online, but involved in in training their reps on on literally call deflection instead of like servicing their customers. So they're trained to kind of waste your time and get you off the phone, which if true is so wildly unacceptable and shocking. Like ethically, like unacceptable. So, so let me give you guys a pro tip because I have gone down this route uh, myself. My husband has his loans with Mohela. And of course, they messed things up when we were trying to get a refund of payments made during COVID. And we didn't need the refunds. But I'm like, you know, I, I help clients. So I want to know firsthand what this is like. And uh, they took over 90 days. So we filed a complaint. And during our process of being on hold with Mohela, they would just hang up on us. And so what I figured out by call number three, which at that point it had been, you know, several hours and lifetime of gray hairs, is that you need to start the call by immediately asking for that employee's rep code or rep ID. What is your name? What is your rep ID? And start a documentation, uh, a paper trail right away um, before you kind of escalate from there. So that way you're going to show your due diligence and everything that you've done to try to resolve the issue. And so by the time we filed a complaint with the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, I did gather this information. I had dates, times, numbers, very specific information. 
with the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, just a little insight into the process, the entity against whom you are filing a complaint, they have 60 days to respond. And guess how long Mohela took to respond to us? 59. They took 59 days and oh they said, you know, we've resolved the issue. We got the refund. Okay. And then what did they do after we got the refund? The balance on the loan was totally wrong. It just like, it's like they made up a number and they pulled it out of thin air. So then we filed a second complaint. I promise I'm a nice person in real life, except when it comes to student loans. So I filed a second complaint with the, um, the, the congressperson's constituent services office. So went a different route there. And then they were able to get that resolved. But it really just helps to pay attention, keep records of what you've done and when you've done it. And for like, for people who think like, you know, maybe mo like this is potentially some unethical stuff that's happening, right? Like, and so because we think, oh, it's just because Mahela wants to make it harder for us to just, you know, have lower payments or not more payments at all, or just get our money back. Even if you're trying to pay them, they can be problematic. I actually have a friend, right, who gets, um, you know, there are, if you work for like the AmeriCorps, right, you can get actually payment towards your student loans. And I had someone who had like a remaining, like she had like a remaining balance of like 3000. And when payments restarted in September, she was like, hey, I'm going to take the three, you know, grand uh, amount money that I have from the AmeriCorps to actually pay off my loans. Um, talk about hanging up every time she, you know, she was just to get the payment from like one processor to another processor it took over three months, right? Think about just sending your money from one bank to another bank, right? Um, and then every time she would call to check on it, she would get hung up on or redirected, right? I think one day she spent on hold like four or five hours and then hang up. So it's just like, it is like widespread. So I don't think they have like a personal agenda on one item. I think it's just, un just unfortunate problems that are accumulating. So if you relate to any of these experiences, if it helps to know, no, you're not going crazy. It's just happening a lot and it's really frustrating and you could feel really alone. Uh, people being told they'd be called back and not getting called back, hours of hold, misinformation. And, and I don't think any of us want to assume that there is something inherently bad going on where anyone means to do ill will, I think, and before I know our podcast and Travis has covered this, is the, I think, workload dumped on Mohila in this rapidly and ever-changing environment of student loans that overwhelms us at times, and we're fast and great to adapt, but this is a an, an, an intense area that's been problematic for a long time where communication has historically been an issue. Servicers telling people the right thing has historically been an issue. The DOE effectively communicating student loan change and guidance has historically been an issue. This isn't all new, and this is why a lot of the temporary changes, like years back, the public service loan forgiveness waiver and the IDR adjustment and waiver going on now for one and a half more months. So don't forget if you still need to take advantage of it. But the reason those programs were created, like it was clear from the original announcements and memos on them, that it was to address a longstanding history of, of, of failures in communicating the right things and in student loans being too uh, gosh darn unintendedly complex. And so a lot of those problems are dumped on Mohila's lap. Are there better things to do than potentially organizing call deflection schemes? I sure hope so. Um, but they've got a few more months to to figure out at least this piece. Yeah, to and to a certain extent, you know, you you at least in beginning, you are sympathetic to maybe Mohoyo's cause, right? Like during the pandemic, Fed loan was like, we're out, bye, you're in charge now. Um, and basically, you know, Mohela was now in charge of the whole PSLF program and took on a bunch of borrowers at the on ramp of payments starting up at three and a half. Meanwhile, the, we're gonna like, hey, let's release save August first. You got to do this at the same time as that. And we're still doing these account adjustments. And so we're going to continue to make extensions uh, or continue to just pivot how we're putting the wording out on student aid, right, .gov. Uh, and so I think, and, and then generally with the lack of funding with, you know, the Department of Education and their ability, maybe that is influencing their lack of ability to be directing communication too. Of how, because I think about how like the last three months with Mohela would be a lot less frustrating if they just told us about how they're doing their 90 day, 35 day, their 10 day um, IDR recertifications. I think that's a really kind um, 
context that you've provided, Sam, too, because at the end of the day, it's true that when you're talking with someone, it's just a person at the end of the line and they're doing the best they can with the resources they have, which is not much. They've, they're pretty strapped with all the things that they've been tasked to do. You know, there hasn't been increased funding. There isn't the staffing available. So, yeah, we generally are working with people on the phone that are, you know, overworked, underpaid, right? And they are essentially sounds like putting new reps on the phone who you haven't really necessarily been fully trained or at least confidently fully trained. Like I've had clients report to me that um, when some, they call in and they do get a person, that person right up front tells them like, hey, I'm newer to the phone. Please pardon me as I work through this with you, which to an extent, extent, I appreciate that transparency. Um, but that's got to be a really hot seat to be in. I'm glad that they started doing that. I didn't know that that was a thing. So I learned something on our call today. I think that's so honest to just be upfront about what you're able to help someone with. So yeah, I think whatever, whatever training and, and organization is going on there needs some, needs some fixes. It needs some, some changes. Uh, I talked to a, a lot, big mix of reps. A few have been really nice and competent a few and i use that word seriously a small few um but even then like i've had a i've had issues where they totally understand what i'm saying and want and then they are messaging a manager that you can't speak with but that is telling them what to tell us which is wrong and it is whoo so Ben, as the yeah. master uh, Mohila phone person at this point, um, would you say that compared to like pre-pandemic or calling in and getting a manager when you need it? Because that that that's kind of from like our playbook is get the manager, get the supervisor, like, you know, talk to them. Do you feel like it's harder to get that supervisor now than it has been in the rest? I find that the supervisor is always being talked to by another supervisor for at least what I've had to do and that you can't get the answers unless this is part of the supposed deflection, but you can't get the answers from the person who's actually giving them. So my issues with the IDR anniversary dates and what you just brought up with, you have 90 days before your IDR anniversary date as the soft time frame for when your servicer is going to start reaching out to you about recertifying for your IDR plan and reminding you of that IDR anniversary date. Generally, all of your income information is due 35 days prior to your actual IDR anniversary date. And 10 days prior to that actual deadline is the deadline for having done the paperwork and turning in your income documentation to make sure for that deadline, the payment can switch moving forward. That is, how student loans work. That is how income-driven repayment plans work. Those are the rules, but Mohila just makes things up and they maybe don't show you the IDR anniversary date. Maybe they're showing you one of those soft dates before. So when it's time for IDR recertification, use your past data, use servicer communications, use your borrower portal, use NSLDS. And if those things all give you a consistent and accurate answer, you're probably in the right place and you probably don't need to call them and be tortured. But if things are not aligned across those pieces and you're confused and you don't know what to do, you may need mo a Mohila rep ultimately to give you some resolution or you could end up recertifying sooner than you need to. But for now, we know that is not until late fall 2024 rather than March 2024. So let's pivot then to some of the other issues we've, we've been seeing um, with Mohila as far as delays. Um, Sam, can you speak to that a little bit that you've seen with your clients? Well, yeah, sure thing. So I think you know, right now, and I love Ben's plug earlier about the IDR waiver, right? Remember that was also extended till April 30th. So you have the, if you're in the process of thinking of considering um, a consolidation, you have until then to kind of take the benefits, uh, take advantage of the benefits. But um, the, because of that, we're seeing more <laughs> consolidations right now. And we have been probably for the last year and a half, and even dating back to the PSLF waiver in uh, 2022. Um, but uh, and to make sure, you know, we're speaking the same language here, when you're consolidating, you're essentially taking all of the loans, smushing them together, getting a new direct consolidation loan. And it's, so that means like the old loans are actually getting paid off, right? And then you get a new loan um, with the, uh, the balance that was previously on those loans. Um, and for and a couple other servicers, but Mohela's uh, consolidations are actually processed by Aid Advantage, which is another servicer. 
Um, and so that's, <laughs> I think, generally just a confusing thing when you're going through a consolidation, when you're getting notifications from a servicer that is not yours. Um, but I think for Mohela's case, that is actually causing extra delay. So our normal time frame, and when I say no, you know, normal times back before the war, um, it was probably 30, 40 days to do the whole process of, you know, consolidate, get into an income driven repayment plan and be good to go. Um, but I've actually had just, I've had Mohela lose consolidations. Um, I've had Mohela confirm that like, yeah, they've received the consolidation and then not proceed to be able to, you know, complete it through taking it to aid advantage and back. Uh, for, you know, upwards of 60, 75 days, right, um, which is, you know, way longer extension uh, than you would think uh, and th something that's normally processed. Um, so setting timeline expectations right now, especially with them, um, it's kind of like the Wild Wild West. Um, and, you know, I, I got that that note from Lauren, who's been calling Mohela Wild Wild West probably for five, six months now. <laughs> Yeah, she's, she's not wrong about that. So yeah, we're seeing a lot of delays just in those consolidations, the um, processing times, the employment certification forms. It's, it is the wild rest West because we'll see someone, you know, who does this. I got someone, who, you know, they emailed me and they're like, oh, they processed it in like two weeks. And I'm like, what? It's like that, mind blown, that mind blown emoji, right? <laughs> I'm like, log into Mohala right now and share your screen with me. Um, <laughs> I've been telling people expect wait times of up to four months. And if they, you know if there's been no forward progress with that, probably just resubmit it or reach out to them. And uh, let's talk a little bit about the teacher forgiveness too. I know this is a smaller group, but this is um, another area that we're seeing some delays in. Yes, yeah, similar to just normal public service loan forgiveness delays too, right? So uh, it's just, I think normally when you reach your magic number, it can take, there's that lag two to three months. Um, right now we're seeing that get pushed upward of, four to five months, like, you know, getting even longer. And I just think it's just general processing delays at this point, because if you've ever done any type of forgiveness requesting and verification through Mohela, you're, you're familiar with probably what is called the, the processing screen, um, where it tells you your, your thing has been actually received, it's processing, and then there's like this process status. Um, if you've learned probably that process you have trust issues it doesn't actually mean it's processed my take is that when it switches from you know processing is like hey it's in our queue and we're like we're working it um and process i've kind of interpreted as uh hey uh we've you know everything you've sent in your verification form makes sense it tracks we're going to accept it for now uh but that doesn't necessarily mean that the payment tracker uh is updated to reflect that those payments are now qualifying right with the employer uh and so that itself from when it's processed like quote, the, the status change of going to processed and actually seeing your payment tracker updated can that itself can have a lag of one to two months on Mohela. Uh, and then from there, if you're actually attaining forgiveness, once that tracker is even updated, you might still have another month or two before that actually gets forgiven. Right. So typically looking at anywhere from when you, when you see that form is received in, in processing three to four months from there. I, once you've done all the right things, mm -hmm. yes. not driving yourself crazy, but being accountable and paying attention to what's happening is is important. We I, we kind of joke it's it's six figure patience when you're waiting on a big pile of forgiveness, and that loss of control for something that's so impactful can feel scary and and alarming. But oftentimes there is nothing more you can do to make anything any more clear or happen any faster right there's no formal cue of of where is your forgiveness app in line with all the others what are they doing processing yours right now that's not really clear and as much as uh the averages are pushed back there are things that happen sooner and and later i know one of the things that blew my mind in an exciting and duly frustrating way was two people submitted for pslf same month one still waiting the other's loans had been forgiven and they got their refund of overpayments that was made beyond the 120 already processed back to them from the treasury. Because if you overpay for PSLF, even after applying for that 120th payment and you keep paying, you actually get that money refunded back to. Um, and like I, you know, I'm, I get a lot of this info and I'm picking up on because I get a lot of sometimes questions or we're, whether it's in the, you know, teachers or students education staff admin Facebook group where we have a lot of people asking, you know, hey, I've reached 120 and they'll show like a picture of the payment tracker, right? Like, what do we, uh, what do I do now? Um, hey, first of all, congratulations, you've done it. Um, it's going to happen, especially if you can verify all 120 is actually 
120, right? Um, but if sometimes people, uh, Mohela will actually put them in for Barron's. But when you actually submit your final employer verification on student aid, there some, there is a forbearance, and correct me guys if this has changed, there is a forbearance selection option. Like, hey, I've attained 120, please put me in forbearance while we wait for this to process. As long as they're direct loans, if the loans are spell loans and you're in the process of consolidating them, it might not let you check that box. You might have to do oh, it yep, a different yep, way. Good point, good point. Um, and so, but for some reason, if you didn't select that, you know, if you want to bear calling Mohela to request that forbearance, <laughs> but you're welcome to do that. Um, but, you know, especially uh, because, you know, you don't have to necessarily make payments after 120, but like, as Ben said, and this is something that's kind of been the case, you will get it refunded, right? So uh, if anything above that 120, or you should get it refunded, anything above that 120. So in the last few minutes that we have here, let's talk about like the crazy timing of all of these changes, right? We're like right in the middle of tax season, right? People are still filing their taxes. What does this mean for people? What should they be doing right now as they consider like how to file? Yeah, so I would actually, um, we're always gonna be more cautious here than not, right? And I think kind of like our internal mantra is I'm always kind of like other professions do no harm, right? And so we're going to kind of consider like, hey, maybe you should file your taxes as though you might need to recertify this, at some point this year in 2024, right? Um, and so I that's, even though historically, right, you know, you might, given the, the kind of information that's been released, like you would kind of assume that your anniversary date, if it fell between, you know, March 1st and September 30th is going to get pushed out a year, we can't, it sounds like no one will be forced to recertify before that, but what happens in September if you are forced to recertify, right? So uh, making sure you're protected using your correct tax form or however process you want to do. Um, but I know we can nerd out here in tax strategies, so I'll let Ben oh, speak all day. to a little bit more of this too if he wants to add a different element. I just think for a lot of you listening who've had a, a, income go up or, or factors go up that would cause your payment to go up significantly from where they were set up previously or, or particularly from 2022's uh, income and adjusted gross income rather than 2023's with the IDR certifications being pushed back to fall uh, and that 90 day window when you can submit payment info within your IDR anniversary date. For a lot of you, it's probably going to make sense to consult your tax professional about if filing an extension uh, would work where the uh, return isn't due until mid-October, uh, but any taxes owed uh, would still be, be owed for the normal tax deadline. Uh, so consult your tax pro, but the benefit from a student loan perspective of an extension is that if your 2023 income is going to be higher than what you could use for 2022, then if you've already filed your return come this fall when you're due to recertify, you're going to have to show that higher number and higher payments. But if you could still use 2022's income and if that would be better for you to make sure you consider uh, doing that. And then if not, as Sam was saying, protect yourself to assume if you, especially if you don't know your IDR anniversary date, that you're going to have to recertify this year and, and make tax decisions in line with that and how that's going to affect your payments until you get next uh, file. So good conversations to make sure your, your tax planner and student loan decisions are, are, are fully aligned, particularly with these changing timelines. Uh, maybe you made some decisions, maybe you got to rethink. <laughs> kind of pivot, you know, every day, just new, new information makes you have to pivot your strategy with student loans. Well, guys, we covered a lot of stuff today. Is there anything else people need to know about Mohala Mo Problems? No, I think we covered, I think me and Ben could have probably like another hour and a half here, but I think it's fair. But also want to shout out to Meredith from the team, who's actually the uh, idea for the Mohala Mo Problems uh, name for today. Yes, thank you, Meredith. Well, all right, guys, this was a great discussion. If you're out there listening and you're frustrated, you need help with a plan, you need someone to vent to, check out studentloanplanner.com, subscribe to our newsletter. And if you need um, some extra attention, you can book a consult with one of um, our lovely team members. With that, I bid you a good day and good luck.